What is up YouTube? In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Coro Space 3. Uh, many people are interested in buying this watch, especially as an alternative over the Garmin. Any Garmin for that matter of fact, especially at this price point. And then today, in this video, we'll mainly be covering how to connect your external devices. So, as we all know, all these new watches do have pretty good heart rate sensors and they do record your heart rate pretty accurately. But it's mostly when you're not doing much activity. For example, if you're walking around the house, if you're going to sleep, it will do your sleep tracking or your heart rate tracking pretty well when you're not very busy or you're not doing anything too excessive like riding a bicycle or running at a very high speed like sprints for example so that's just what you get with wrist-based heart rate monitors the accuracy is never going to be great even if the heart rate monitor itself is or the sensor is pretty good um, i'd say you're not going to get too accurate results with the wrist-based heart rate sensor so you'll need to get something else many people use a chest strap um, many people use these new ones, uh, which is uh, an arm-based um, heart rate monitor. Well, this is a Skosh. I think you can check out DC Rainmaker. I think he has quite an extensive review and he tests out the accuracy of the Skosh and he found it to be uh, very, very accurate. Uh, but today we're not going to review this product. Uh, we're just going to connect it to our Coros. And we're just going to show how easy it is to connect it. Which makes the the other thing with the Koros watch that makes the value for money so great is the fact that it also has um, mp3 playback which means you can load or upload mp3s i know that's very outdated i think back in the 2000s people still used to save mp3s on the computers or on the phones you will actually need to connect your Koros watch via usb cable to your computer or your pc or your laptop and you'll need to have mp3s on that pc or laptop that's just the unfortunate thing but for many of us there are i think over 30 we probably have some mp3s saved on our uh, computers or on our phones anyway the only ship they need is to first transfer them to your laptop and then connect it via usb cable i wish chorus would do some kind of an update where you can just send it through bluetooth uh, or even through Wi-Fi because this watch has Wi-Fi and just connect it straight to the watch but I suppose it's not too big of a problem if you don't have a laptop then yes you will have to I don't know if you just find a friend I'm sure you know someone that has a laptop and then you can connect this to it and then it opens up just like um, a folder a memory folder on your computer and then you just drag and drop all your mp3s onto it and then it will play but we'll get into playing that and it also it does have Bluetooth, so if you have buds like I have, the great thing is that you could have this heart rate Bluetooth monitor. Well, this has Bluetooth and actually has ANT, but the Coro Space 3, unlike the Coro Space 2, doesn't have ANT, so you will have to connect it via Bluetooth, but it's not a problem. The connection is pretty stable, and I haven't had any issues with it. I've only been using it for two weeks, but I haven't had any issues with it so far. There's no drop in heart rate or anything. And it connects pretty well and pretty easily to your buds and it plays pretty clear. I haven't had any jumps or... And it plays pretty well and pretty clear and there is some functionality from the Bluetooth headset uh, to, your, to your watch. So you can pause, play, um, you can stop, you can skip a song, you can go back to your previous song. Um, the only thing you can't do that I noticed, no you can also increase the volume. Today we just want to connect these two things and just want to show you how simple it is and how well it works. And the other upside of this over you getting a Samsung watch or you getting a Garmin watch is definitely the battery life. So coming back to this watch and the music capabilities. So the big difference between this and the Garmin music, which is significantly more expensive. This watch retails for about $219 and the Garmin 265 music retails for $399. Or $399 which is it's more than $150 difference and the only real difference is that the, the Garmin allows you to to play music or stream music 
through the watch so you can play youtube music or you can use spotify which you can't do on this this is very old based so you'll have to load mp3s onto this and then actually play it uh, through your headphones as opposed to um, you know these days people don't load music anymore they just open spotify they have a playlist ready and then basically they just press play but that requires you to have data so you obviously need to upload the playlist onto your watch beforehand which might be a slip anyway because when you're doing things in Ari and as you know between working and having a life outside of running and any kind of endurance sport that you're doing you obviously will be in a rush sometimes you come from work you need to go for a run you don't upload the playlist whereas the mp3s are always stuck on this device yes you need to listen to the same songs over and over but at least it's always accessible it's always available and that may, there is some ease to that as well so essentially or basically the chorus has two buttons a scrolling wheel which also doubles as a button and then the second button which acts as the back button okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to unlock it by holding down the scrolling wheel button and then you want to tap on the scrolling wheel button one more time then you will find this menu so we're going to go into settings and you'll see there's wi-fi there's more settings like tones touch screen stuff like that it also has a touch screen, so you can, it's not the most amazing touch screen in the world, but it helps sometimes. Although the scrolling wheel is so amazing that you never even really need to use a touch screen in any case. So what you want to do here is you want to go to accessories, you want to add a Bluetooth device. So now it's going to search for a Bluetooth device. So I'm going to switch my scotch on, you could probably do it before the time, it's probably better. Okay, when the scotch is flashing red and blue, uh, then you know it's waiting for a connection or rather to make a connection okay so now that's probably another device in the house so there you can see so this is originally called the Skosh um, Rhythm Plus 2.0 so there you can see there's a R Plus 2.0 and it says heart rate and there you can see a little um, I don't know if you can see this but yeah you can see there's a little icon there that shows that it's a a heart rate monitor or rather an external heart rate monitor so you're gonna just click the scroll wheel there and now it's going to connect and what you should see is once it's connected then there should be a stable blue light on the skosh okay there we go connected okay maybe I'm wrong maybe it's not this a stable or rather consistent blue light it's still a flashing blue light Okay, so now we want to test if it's actually working. So we're gonna tap again on the scrolling wheel. We're gonna go to run, or we can even go to indoor run, doesn't really matter. So there you can see it's trying to pick up the heart rate. And there you'll see. You see that same icon appears. That same heart rate icon. I was saying, you can see the same heart rate icon there. I don't think it's really picking up my heart rate unless it's reading it from my finger now, which I doubt. So it's a, really as simple as that and any time that you have your skosh on, it's going to use that for, or rather to read your heart rate. So I'm going to turn this off and let's just see what happens. Okay, so the skosh is off and now it's saying, you see it's jumped back to that heart now. So now we know that the heart rate strap is not connected or it's not working. Then also, if you have your skosh on or you just switched on and you're already inside the menu, you'll see your watch will automatically switch over to that. You see, there the icon appears again. So now it's trying to pick up the heart rate, which it won't because I don't have anything connected to it. Okay, now, as soon as you say start now, you'll see it will say heart rate and it will say external or EXT. That means it's using uh, the heart rate that it's picking up from the skosh. Uh, and it's actually picking up my heart rate from my fingers right now. Okay, then if and when you want to connect your Bluetooth headset and do through the same way, you're gonna go down to system, accessories, 
and you're gonna add Bluetooth again and you can see uh, my Bytes 2 Pro are already connected now. So, and it's picking up the Scosche again. So let me just switch that off. Okay. So now you wanna know how to play music, for example. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your run. You're gonna say, you wanna do a treadmill run, for example. And you're gonna start. I'm not gonna wait for my heart rate because I don't care right now. So you would scroll through the different uh, menus, but you wouldn't find the music so how you would do that is you actually hold down the back button and it brings up an entire different menu. So you go into music and then you can either use your finger to press play or you can use the button to press play. And that's basically it. That's how you connect your Scosche external heart rate monitor. So yes guys, it really is as simple as that. If you got any benefit from this video then give it a like. Um, I hope to do future videos on the Coro Space 3 um, with regards to the many other features that it has and, and let me know in the comments uh, if my approach or the way I articulated things could have been done better or if the lighting is bad I'm pretty new at this so I wouldn't mind constructive criticism or just drop a comment just for the sake of the algorithm anyway cheers guys see you in the next one